Good morning and welcome to Carnation Crafts TV. We are live from the Carnation Crafts TV studios. It's very exciting. So we're looking at Wild Wonders this week and we've been on all week looking at it. Unfortunately, I couldn't go live yesterday. I do apologise. Had a little bit of a thing going on with my eyes. Uh, but we're back today and all is well. So we're going to have a look at it today. Now, I promised you all week that we do a composition piece and we would use those reeds. So that's what we're going to do predominantly today. I'm going to go through the boards with you, but we'll get some housekeeping out of the way first, just so you know. Also, I've got my uh, laptop next to me. So if you want to put a comment on on Facebook, I can see it and hopefully we can have a bit of a chit chat as well, because that's my favourite thing to do. Uh, so, yes. We want to talk to you about some various pieces. First of all, I will say the Wild Wonders collection, the main collection itself, the item number for it is 220513, and that is a show price of 119.99. Is that correct, Miss Taz? Free P and P. Now if you're a member of the Carnation uh, newsletter, if you've signed up to the Carnation newsletter, you get a 10% discount code per month. Not everybody has signed up to that newsletter. So we wanted to give everybody who just watches a fair crack of the whip and to be able to say to you that there is a discount code for everybody when you're watching the show. And for this particular collection, that one is WWYD10. Is that correct? You are the first person to get it right. First, first time. time. <laughs> That's because I've listened to it all week. I had an advantage. It's on the screen. So it's on the, the screen. WWYD10. Pop that into the code as you check out. And as you check out, that will give you a 10% discount. As always, with um, the US customers or those people who are outside of the UK, your postage and package, if you buy the full collection, your postage and package is 4 95 If you want to add in the perfect papers, that will be $14.95 combined. And if you want to change out the perfect papers and you want something else, pro print, super smooth, something like that. If you want something else in there, uh, you can, but you need to put a message in the box and you can only add one pack of paper per order. So I hope that all makes sense. Now, oh, hello, lovely people. Uh, so the other thing that I need to mention uh, is we are up for some nominations for the Craft Beautiful Awards. And so they've put us, uh, so with the categories that we want to be nominated for, if you like, our best brand for crafts. So we, if you could possibly vote Carnation. Best rated customer service. I think that goes without saying they are second to none. Favourite die cutting range, uh, uh, which I think certainly with the people who are watching today may agree with. Designer of the year, Nick, I will say he does really deserve it that boy works very very hard and then it says at the bottom we are biased but we think Hannah Carla Dawn and Dave would make graph great craft personalities of the year which is very debatable with me but anyway um so that is that that's that piece of housekeeping so in order to do the nominations for that you just head over to their website and it's got all the categories there and we would obviously really appreciate your vote there's no pressure to do so but we would appreciate it um Hello, Viv. Hi, Christine. You all good? I do love it when you chit chat with me. Um, yes, so that's that bit. So the other side to this is uh, the bundle today. Everything comes together except for one thing, which is the oversized frame. Now, I'm going to talk about the oversized frame first uh, because it is separate, but it has been incredibly popular for good reason. It is beautiful, but it's also too to essentially two or three card shapes in one. Now I've got the board in front of me for it, so I'm hoping I can make sense of this for you. The red piece at the bottom, which is really difficult for you to see, but it's this outside die on the pink and reds, if you see it here, that is 19 and a half by 19 and a half centimeters. So it's just over seven inches, I believe. And so it's a big whacking card. It is beautiful. You get all your mats and layers with it and you get this big piece of filigree. 
Then we get this next card base here, the red one that I've got my nail on just there. That is 12 centimeters by 12 centimeters. Obviously turned square, it is a card on its own. So you get the two card shapes in one. Then you get the little dinky one, which I'm guessing is probably about five centimeters, somewhere around there. And that one, again, can be used for those lovely little cards that we, we see, but you know, you can use it as gift tags or you get to use the whole thing together. It is an enormous set. So it is the perfect card shape because you can use it in so many ways. Brilliant for easel cards, really, really pretty. And obviously with all carnation, you can take away the filigree, you can add filigree, you can use certain panels from it. So it builds up into these really gorgeous different shapes, which is really nice to have. So that is your oversized square frame. That is on the item code 220523 and that is 3495. Um, Viv says she's got her square die Wednesday, hoping my second order comes today as I can't wait to play. It's so exciting when they come, isn't it? I've had um, a collection delivered two days ago for a collection that's coming out in June. So I got to see that and, and start to play with that and you are gonna love it, but I'm not allowed to talk about it, apparently. Uh, and you know, when am I not in trouble? So that is your oversized square frame. Let's have a look at the boards for this and then we're gonna start demoing. So. You've got your beautiful uh, scrappy bow corner, which I love, love, love. Good morning, Sheila. Good morning, Alison. Um, and this is just so, so pretty. I love all of the texturing on this and that button in the center is so cute. <laughs> Viv says tease. I know. Yeah, but Viv, if you saw it, you'd be so excited. It is, I'm not, don't, you can't keep, no, no. I will end up telling you and I'll get into trouble. It is beautiful. Um, it's. This all builds up. You can make it sort of flat if you want it to be, but you can have all four opposing sides so we can make a beautiful frame on this. And actually, if you think about that on the four sides of the oversized square frame, you can imagine how gorgeous that is. Good morning, Debbie. We've got the two. There's always one, always one. It's never me. The beautiful little carnation mice, which we're so familiar with, aren't we now? They've become just the, the little sort of mascots almost. They're so sweet with the little drinking glasses here and the, all the little goblets and they're just beautiful. And again, it's that thing of adding them into all of the other uh, little mice that you've got. Penelope says, Penelope says she can't resist this set in trouble again. Yeah, but it's worth it. They're so lovely. Look at his little tummy. I want to see what you're all making. Oh, my sister's there. She says, good day, Carla, because my sister lives in Australia. Good day, Gemma. Are you all right? Um, Suzanne says she's already on the naughty stuff. Yeah, but it's worth it. So you've got this beautiful little tummy with these cut lines that we can go and we can use the ball tool for and you can play. Pam says, hi, Carla and Taz. Hello. Miss Tiz Taz has just sat in front of me being very well behaved this morning. She's made me coffee, so she's welcome to stay a bit longer. And now we have got the car keys. Now these are a funny one, and I, I've sort of said this all week actually with these, because it's that really uh, kind of, until you start using them, you're a bit like, why would I need car keys? But uh, they are so lovely. The colorway's gorgeous. So you've got that kind of whimsy. So we're not going in with that very masculine aspect, but we can use them for masculine cards. And you've got your corner element as well. So obviously the key that goes across here and the key that goes down there, because we can flip them, we can make a full frame with them. And you've got your key fob if you want to use it. So you've got with this, you can start making those um, driving test cards for people who have passed their test, your congratulations. If you just want to use these ones, you've got your new home, you've got key to the door for 21, you know, all the little bits that we'll use. I would say cut this a ton of times and just keep it in a little plastic bag and keep it with you sort of at the front of your card making things because I think you'll just be able to take them out every now and again and use them on those cards that we make all the time, don't we? And then these little chaps, Dandelion and Burdock, which have stolen the show. Everybody has fallen in love with their little cute faces and they are so very sweet. Little ears and little beautiful little eyes, those soulful eyes, they're just beautiful. And again, all your cut lines for shaping. We've got Pip, who is the most beautiful bird and hopefully we'll get a look at Pip today because I think I'll bring her in with the wreath. We'll see how it goes but she is absolutely stunning. All the chance here to use your ball tools, to you know pull out of those wings, tool on the eye here at the back and you'll make it all 3D. She's so, so pretty and I love her very, very much. 
Then we go on to Buck, who is the bunny rabbit. And Buck is very handsome. Look at those ears. We do love a pair of hands and lungs. Look at that. His little paws. Don't, you can see it really well on there, actually, all of those cut lines. And they're not just there to add texture and detail. They are there for your um, sort of crafting out. It is. They are purposeful. It just means you can cut that paper. You can break those fibres, and that's important. This is your... I can never remember what this one's called, Miss Tistas. Help me out. Near and far. Near and far. And so this one is... Well... This piece here is whatever you want it to be. We've decided. I'm sure there was a specific thing, but people have come up with different ideas for it. So your telephone poles, your washing lines, trampoline, hammocks, all the different things that you want it to be, it can be any of those. So that's gonna be really useful. It's brilliant for perspective. It's brilliant for layered aperture cards as well, because it gives you that little scene in the background while you build up on the front of your card. So it's really, really useful. You've got your foliage, you've got your fence, which you can put together to create one large, long fence. Then you've got your little tree, which is super sweet. And they do look cute if you have one on each of these poles and it just sort of looks like it's off in the distance and then that grounding device that we always need, that dirt pile. And these are obviously so that your characters aren't just floating in mid-air, there is actually a purpose to them being there and that is, you know, always going to be important. And then this, this is what we're going to be playing with today. So I did promise you all week that this is the thing that I would play with today so that you can see kind of how it comes together because it's such a whacking set of metal is this, it's huge. And I guess if you're new to card making, something like this can seem almost intimidating when you take it out of its packaging and don't be intimidated. It's not all meant just as one piece, it is separate elements and we use them in different ways. So first of all, you've got these gorgeous leaves. Now these are the light work that actually match these. So you can see them in the colorway here and you can see them here. And what that does is you can use them separately or we can bring them together and glue them on top and you have this beautiful light work, this skeleton that sits on top. Um, so you've got them as they are. Joyce says, I don't seem to have the drinking mice in my pack. Were they separate? No, they weren't, Joyce. Uh, can you get in touch with Carnation on the customer services email, which you'll find on the website, and just get in touch with them and they will help you with your order. Uh, they're very good, so they will help sort that out for you. You can message them on this page as well and they will get that sorted. You've got the bow here, which is beautiful. That can all be shaped out and worked into this gorgeous shape. And it's really lovely showstopper pieces that that's gonna make a massive, massive impact on your card. And then this little element here, which is so, so clever. So this little tab fits into that slot and this little tab fits into that slot. So you can have this beautiful arched card shape or if you prefer, you can cut the square twice and have it a full square and you have a wreath there or the two semicircles, obviously, to create a full circle. And then you've got the mini one on the inside as well. So there's loads of ways of playing with that. And each slot that goes round means you can tuck something into it if you want to or you can stick stuff on it, obviously. So they didn't leave you empty handed, they did give you the florals and these are the wild floral arrays. Now if you have followed Carnation for any time you will probably already have a certain amount of florals from them that all fit into these like the midi floral arrangements and those kind of things. They will still tuck into these as well. So you can get loads of playtime with them but look at the vibrancy and the colours of them so we can really build but it is that gorgeous wild garden feel to them. You've got the two dragonflies you have the ladybugs and then you've got your beautiful tree trunks down at the bottom here so this is where we start to play and this is what we're going to use today so we're going to bring it all together and finally have a look at this and see where we get with it and we'll have a look at designing it hopefully as a piece on its own and then as a piece on a card uh, we'll just do some swapping and changing because it's composition day we like composition day it's my favorite so one last shout is the perfect papers so for any of you who know carnation you will know the value of the perfect papers and you know why we use them these are such a gorgeous range of colors i love the pink and the green specifically that gorgeous pistachio it just looks like a sweet shop to me or an ice cream shop um 
I really, really like these. So you get 48 sheets, they're 300 GSM, you get six colors and you get eight of each color. So you get loads and loads of playway there, which means you can keep using them again and again. And uh, you know, I do always say with the, the perfect papers, you don't have to just use them for this collection. They're gonna fit with other collections that you've got as well. They are designed specifically to go with this collection because the colors are color picked from your vignettes. I'll explain vignettes to those of you who don't know in a second but the colors all come together so nothing clashes on your card which is important isn't it because we don't want it to look kind of off in any way so we use the perfect papers then we have back in papers as well which are on the website and they are free so you get to use those whenever you choose and you can use them as often as you want carnation crafts has a free angel policy and you can sell anything that you make if you just heard me pause, it's because somebody is ringing a doorbell downstairs, just so you know. We're just gonna ignore it. Did you hear it? No. Did you not hear it? We're just gonna ignore them. Everyone hide, everyone hide. So anyway, vignettes are something that we get off the website. So for every collection that you go, you go to downloads, uh, which is on the top menu there, and you press a free downloads and you go to the right hand side and you choose the collection you want to have. And it will have every single collection that Carnation have ever done. We're choosing Wild Wonders for this one. And obviously you've got there your Wild Wonders back in papers and your Wild Wonders inserts at the bottom, they are free. Then you've got the vignettes for the full collection. When you're looking at the vignettes, can you hold it there, Taz? Where it says there's always one, just in the mid at the uh, left, right side, one side, I don't know my left and my right. At one side, it says there's always one vignette. You can see there's a black stripe down the middle of it. Not all of your vignettes will have that black stripe. You get the choice. You can print either with that black stripe or without. If you do the one with the stripe, it's because you're going to do a mirrored vignette and you fold it on that black line. You use some spray glue. That spray glue then obviously folds those two pieces together and keeps them stuck. You put your die on top and put it through your machine. And when it comes out, you will have an image on both sides of your die cut. And that means everything that you've got can be swapped and you can have it left and right. It's just, uh, you know, you're getting double for your money. So make sure you use those when you can. Uh, and obviously always print on ProPrint where possible. I think that's everything. I think I'm done with the housekeeping. Am I done with the housekeeping, Miss Taz? Yes, it's time to demo the favorite bit. So whenever we're doing a composition show, which we tend to do on Fridays when we do a launch, um, whenever we're doing composition, it's always about not knowing where we're going. So I never plan my composition pieces because um, I, I like the element of freedom. And so I haven't planned this out at all. We're just gonna play. Uh, but I do want to talk to you about these beautiful um, shapes that you've got in the laminar set, which are just gorgeous, aren't they? So a lot of people have asked for demos on this. I think, you know, we're just wondering how it works specifically. That was a bit fancy, Miss Taz, with the whole flashing of the screen business. So you can see, <laughs> you can see here, you've got your two semicircle ones here and you've got your two squares. Now I can literally just clip these in to each other just by pushing that into there and pushing this one into there and they just clip and that's gonna give me a full circle to create a wreath with. How clever is that? And you can put a little bit of glue on the back if you want to just to hold that fast. Same with the square, same thing. So all we need to do is clip those together, she says, and same again at this side. And you've got a square, really simple, really beautiful. And then we can start playing with them. Uh, so it's it's just whichever way you want to do it. Now I'm not going to use it that way. I am going to change things around a little bit and I'm going to take the square and the semicircle and we're going to use those together. Alison says, could you do a mirrored vignette on the scan and cut and resize the die on it? Right, okay, this is a, a little bit of brain force that I'm trying to work out in my head and I've been trying to work it out for ages because I absolutely think there is a way of doing that on the scan and cut. I just can't get my brain to work out exactly how. So there isn't actually a mirrored vignette on the scan cut for obvious reasons because it, you're not folding it beforehand. And if you were to fold it beforehand and stick it on your mat, obviously you're gonna tear one side of your vignette when you take it off the paper. So it wouldn't serve any use anyway. However, 
you can flip images on the scan and cut. So if you were to print it, you can flip it on your printer as well. So if you flipped it on your printer, so you did a, a, a rotate on your, on your printer and then you did the same on your scan and cut, you would have it the same way. Does that make sense? So yes, it would be the flipped image of it. Now I'm gonna work this out properly and do a demo on it when I get time um, so that you can see how it works, but I need to work it out first. Now I will let you all know that there may or may not, I'm probably gonna get shot for this, there may or may not be a USB coming out very soon. I did not say that. I love that you look at me ever so I know, in case I get into trouble, because then I know you were there as well, and so if they're going to shower me, they have to shower both of us. My mat's not sticky, I stick it down with masking tape. Yeah, I do the same, Alison. Um, just because if even if I stick my mat, it ends up not sticky half an hour later, so I just don't bother anymore. So I've got this here. Now, normally speaking, I'm, I would just put a little bit of um, like tape on the back of here just to hold them together. I'm not going to worry about it too much, to be honest, because we're just playing. So I, I will pop a little bit of glue on here. Now, I'm predominantly in this whole demonstration going to be using just wet glue and my applicators because it this doesn't really call for pin flare at this stage. We might use a little bit later on. We'll see how it goes. But in order to just keep these as they are, so I know I've got them in place and I don't have to worry about them traveling anywhere. I'm just gonna make sure it's firmly tucked in, which it is. And we're just gonna place this under here. Tiny amounts, you don't need much. And I'm just gonna place and hold. You don't need to do this essentially, but I don't wanna fight with it later on, so I'd rather it was just glued down and then I don't have to worry about it. So I've got them there and they are gonna sit pretty for me. Now, I don't know if you can see this, probably not. Let me just... When I say, <laughs> when I say I haven't planned this, I wasn't joking. So I've got all of these beautiful florals and pieces here. So this is everything cut from Wild Wonders. If I'm creating demos for you guys or if I'm making cards myself at home, this is how I work. For some people, this might be your worst nightmare, but this is how I work all the time. Because for me, if I can pick and choose as I'm going, it means, for instance, if I was to pick up, say, my little mouse here, and pop him in this corner and think, well, he's beautiful, but would I prefer to do something more realistic? Possibly, and if I was to put some leaves behind him, that would kind of bring him to life. If, however, I put some leaves behind this wee chap, it's going to make my leaves look more cartoonish, which I quite like anyway. But you can see how that looks like foliage and that looks more like a cartoon. Isn't it funny how just the image of these changes those completely? But that's how I work. This is literally the way that I build demos. So just to prove a point to you all. That's my wild wonders. I just have everything in bags and then as I'm working, I take them all out, I spread them out, and then at the end, I just put back in bags what I am using and what I'm not using. Obviously for this, it's gonna be predominantly florals. Viv says, post has just been playtime, yay. Absolutely. So I'm just gonna leave those over there for the time being. So let's have a look at some of these items. Now, first thing to know about these big leaves is that some of them are three little prongs and some of them, if I can find one in my chaos, this is why you might not want to work in chaos. Some of them are four. Can you see? So there's a difference. Now that's going to make a difference as far as, uh, you know, how much it spans. So I don't know how well you can see that, but the three is just slightly narrower than the four below it. So it's gonna make a difference to your corners. So that obviously is gonna take up less expansion than that. And in some, some instance we want less, some we want to cover more in a quicker area, doesn't, don't we? Uh, Yvonne says that shape looks like an igloo. It does look like an igloo. So on this, we've got choices now. Do we want the leaves 
to come down the archway. Do we start at the center and bring everything down and everything round this way? And then we can build up from the center. Or do we want to come up and build it round in a, in a circle? So you could have everything coming round that way. You've got to make these choices before you start because otherwise everything's going to go in a weird way. So you can choose and it's just about making sure you know which way you're gonna start and then you can work out how you're gonna finish. Now for me, I would rather go from the top here and work my way round on either side, just in this instance specifically, because it means that I can build everything and this is gonna be my top layer. And that means I can build on top of it. So it's going to get much busier at the bottom than it is at the top. And that means I can put a little showstopper at the top if I want to. Um, so I can build in that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna see if I can find another four on those leaves. And if I can't, I'll take it and we'll go in with two threes. So I'd rather keep them the same if I can. You don't have to, but as you all know, I'm a bit of a fan of symmetry. So we're gonna go in with the three, just pull it through, and then with the three on the other side. And I'm not sticking at this point, you can. If you wanna stick as you go, that's absolutely fine, but once it's stuck, it's stuck. So I'd rather it was sort of flailing around a little bit until I get to where I want to be. Now, because they cross at the back, if I don't push them down, this one is going to keep flying up. So I've got to manipulate it. And that is potentially the only time I would stick at this stage just to make sure I've got that stuck the way I want it to be stuck. Now, because I've done that, I'm probably going to go in with some color. So everything that I do from this stage is going to be tucked under because you can see these leaves are higher. So I'm tucking underneath because I'm doing a flow downwards, not upwards. Does that make sense, Taz? Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's just about working out which way you want to shape it really. So I'm gonna go in with a vivid pop of red and I'm just gonna tuck. Now, if you're having trouble getting anything through the little slots, just use your pokey tool just to place it through. So you just literally put your pokey in like that and you can tuck any florals through. So that's the best way if you get stuck. I've got these ridiculous nails on so they kind of help just to kind of tuck things in. Uh, and we're gonna go through with some extra florals. I'm not gonna worry about getting symmetry at each side. That's not what wild gardens do. But I am gonna sort of tuck into each little slot, but close together. Let me just get hold of that. So the scan. So we're just threading and weaving. Look how pretty these are. Now what we get to do at this point is to break up some of that green, pull some of your florals through so they sit. So we're, we're getting that beautiful kind of span of everything working together. It's just very, very pretty. Miss Taz is looking at me like my microphone's going a bit doolally. Is it okay now? So. Is that right? It's the power of your mind, is it? Always. Always. She's very clever, is Miss Taz. And then I'm just going to place. So this one's a much bigger floral, and it's great because it's just that pop of colour, but because you've got the span on the blue, you can see I've got colour coming through here and colour coming through there. So I get that beautiful sort of essence of, it's just that pop of colour, isn't it? So I'm going to take in one of these whites, and I'm going to place it where I placed that one so that it's tucking in and it's just going to mirror the green above it, but with a little pop of color between. Karen says, sorry if you're late. Don't ever apologize for being late. It's absolutely fine. You can always watch us on catch up. It's always on the, um, what's it on? On the YouTube. It's always on the YouTube. Um, so you can always catch up on there. And I'm just gonna keep weaving and I'm just gonna mind the length of which pieces I'm putting in. So I know I need something relatively long here to draw it out. So I can put that there. 
Now, what I'm gonna do from this point is start working this way round. Now, partly that is because I don't know how much time we've got. So I might not get time to weave the whole thing. Um, and so if I can work my way down, I can find a stopping point. So I'm just gonna come in at this side. She says she's not gonna worry about symmetry and then goes in for symmetry. It's, it, I think it's just in my brain, this whole symmetrical business. I think it's just the way my brain works. Thanks, Taz. Pop this through this one and tuck it in. Let's make sure I've got a hold of that. And there we go. There's something incredibly satisfying about doing this. How pretty they are, aren't they lovely? Again, we're going in with that blue. Got mirrored vignettes, remember, so I can mirror it. Tuck that colour behind, so I'm just getting that hint of blue. Really pretty. And then I'm going in with my little light work skeleton here. Just pulling through. And just taking it there. Those ones have got this lovely little anchoring point on them. So pulling that through and then I need to find one of my larger foliage pieces and I am starting to get where my colours are matching or my side should I say are matching. Push this longer one through so I've got some length. So it's always thinking about the length and the fullness of it. Now obviously we can go as full as, look how pretty that is already. Isn't that gorgeous? So we can start to work these things out. Now the great thing about this is I've got this line here that's going to give me a place to put a showstopper in. That showstopper could be a floral, it could be, um, you know, one of the little mice, it could be a dragonfly. There's loads of things that we can do in the centre part of that. And so we start to build round. What I'm going to do at the minute is just carry on building, so long as everybody's happy with that. I'll take it possibly to about halfway, and then we'll start thinking about ways of making that into a card. So we'll, we'll, we'll carry on for a little bit with the weaving, just get a little bit more colour into it. So I'm going to go in with this beautiful yellow. I love, love, love these yellow ones. These are my favourite of the florals, I think. Something super pretty about these colours. So just push, look at that little pop of colour right there. Isn't that so pretty? And you see how those shadows build because they're high. So you've got this gorgeous fullness in what we're building here. And it's such a visual treat to have that. Just push in through here. Can I tell you all something very, very exciting while I'm doing this? <laughs> Miss Taz is bored of me saying it, so I'll say it to you instead. My cats are coming to live with me tonight. I get my cats, so you might get to meet Miss Phyllis and Miss Babs, because they're coming to live with me tonight, which is very exciting. So I've had quite the morning. I'm sure none of you are interested in that and I'm very sorry for sharing my personal information, but I am just so excited. So I'm just gonna pop this through. And push those in. So we're building those colors and then I'm gonna start adding in more of the greens. So we're building that depth now. Now what I don't want to do is overshadow all of the colours with the greens. So this is why I'm building up the colours before I put more of those green foliage pieces in. Those green foliage pieces are really important, but they are your bigger elements in this collection. So if I was to put, you know, all of them in, if I would have tucked the green in there, for instance, it becomes more of a foliage piece than it does anything else. You can see how that then overpowers it slightly. So we leave a gap so that when that gap comes in, it's not it's not the biggest part of what I'm building. But that again, personal preference, you do anything at all. If we look at something like this, which the lovely Janine made, this is like obviously predominantly the green and the skeletons with a few chosen colors. So just the whites, the purples in there. So you've got that lovely rounded shape. So that's 
that's the joy of these is you can literally make anything you want from them and I think this is a really stunning example of using it with the perfect papers and those free backing papers to draw everything in and everything together and to use these little elements around and about so it, it's all personal preference this is me just playing um, and what I love is that if I don't like my end result, I can always just unpick these because I haven't stuck anything. So I can just unpick them. And it's just, you know how, I don't know if anybody um, embroiders or, um, you know, crochets or anything like that. It's that kind of mindless craft that sometimes we need because sometimes the most mindless thing is the most mindful thing. And has, as somebody who has you know, some, shall we say, mental health issues. I need that time out and um, I like to just be able to sit and play and weave because it's my, my, my lovely space to just be able to sit and get my head around and get my head into a better place. Uh, now, obviously that's a personal thing for me. It just works for me, but it is a really beautiful thing to do. And things like this really just make me happy sigh uh, in a lovely way. Let's place this one into here. Look at that pop of colour coming down. It, it looks like a crescendo, doesn't it, of, of colour and gorgeousness and prettiness and all of the loveliness. So we just keep building through like so and I'm just going to add in some more color and then I'll probably stop somewhere around here um, and start to build it into a card otherwise I'm going to run out of time for you guys so I'll just weave through or I could just stay all day Miss Taz is shaking her head no place that and pop it through Sandra, love the flowers. Aren't they beautiful, Sandra? So now we're just building colour. That's so gorgeous. Look how pretty that is. Now, what I'm going to do is just add in a couple more purples, a couple more bits of colour, then I'll do another of the green, and then I'm going to stop at that point. Um, now, obviously, if you're at home, you would just build as much as you need to. So I'll just go in here. purple, add in that blue, beautiful colours, that was my tummy, <laughs> did you hear that, sorry, <laughs> and then in with this purple, see if I can just weave that, see these daft plastic nails are good for something Miss Taz, no matter how many times I lose them. And just weaving that colour through and then we get one more blue. Go in with the greens. And then... Look how beautiful these are as they come down. That cascade, isn't it? Just a stunning cascade of colour. Now, if I can find another one of those, we'll go in with two of these and then we're done on the weaving for now. So pull in some of this foliage. Okay, don't. I think we're about there. She says, if I can get this open. A up. I'll pop this one in here because I don't want to fight with it anymore. And I'll just leave that there for now. Right, if I just move some of these out of the way so we can get a clearer view of what's going on here. Look how pretty that is. Right, what I'm going to do is start to look at my other pieces and see what I want to bring in. So where I'm going to go with it first is I just want to put something at the top. Actually, I tell you what we'll do first. We'll turn it over gently and lay it flat. Now, I'm going to take another semicircle and another square. 
And what I'm going to do here is piece these in in the same way. Piece these in the same way. And I'm just going to put a little glue dot on the back of that, hold it steady, and a little glue dot on the back of, we'll do it at the top of this bit, I think, just to hold that steady. So I'm making another exact shape. And then I'm going to take my glue and just put enough on so that it's going to hold my florals. Now spread it really well because otherwise it's going to warp your paper. You need it to be a thin coat, but it's going to hold my florals all together. And I'll just go down to that point. I've only done it on the semicircle, not on the bottom. Place that on top. and then hold and press. That's going to keep all my florals exactly where I want them. It's where I've placed them, hopefully. And I'm just going to fold this back on itself and we'll do it on those cut lines. And that's going to start my card base, but it needs to be thicker than just that one piece. Remember, we've got a heavy piece in place here. So I'm going to double up the thickness of that square don't need to tuck it, don't need to do anything. All I'm doing here is just creating extra structure on the back so that it holds itself up. I might do two or three of those depending on how heavy it is at the front of the card. But for now, that will do. You can see because we did that, I've now got a card base. If this isn't you know, strong enough to hold that structure up, you just add more on the back and it will sort itself out. So obviously we haven't finished the card, but I just wanted to show you that structural base that we can create. And that look how pretty that is, that little archway. Isn't that so sweet? I love, love, love this laminar set. It's so gorgeous. And it looks kind of almost like a, a wedding arch, doesn't it, that you would walk through. It's so pretty. So we've done the base. Let's go from there. I just want to find these because I'm in love with them and this is my final show here with this collection so I'm gonna do the things I want to do so let's take one of these now I'm not going to shape it too much I'm just going to roll it round and place and it's going to go here and it's just going to finish that arch. It's going to hide that. Now I can go in with pin flare if I can find my pin flare. If I can't, we'll use wet glue. Let's see if this will come out. There we go. So a little bit there. So it's just going to hold itself down in the center of that card. That hides that white for me. And it makes, look how pretty that is. Isn't that stunning? Just gorgeous, right? And that's the joy of this. So then what I'm gonna do is take a couple more of these greens and I'll take three or four of them. I'm not too worried. It says, don't you laugh, Miss Taz, because I'm stuck. And you see how you've got this little corner element here. I'm gonna use that to start with. And we're just experimenting here. I'm not, if I go wrong, I can start again. I never worry about making mistakes. It's too easy to get stressed and there's no point. We're not here to get stressed. So I'm just gonna overlap those a little bit. And then I'm gonna take another one. And this time, same thing, just on this little edge here. So I'm always using the least amount of glue I can get away with. Just to overlap. And keep bringing those round. So we've got this beautiful set with those light works and that green because it's so pretty, isn't it? And then all I need to do now, I think, is just add one more green set about there just to finish that off so it's almost a semicircle. So we'll just use our green here. And just offset that. pretty that is. Isn't that stunning? 
really sweet. What I'm going to do, now they're all glued together and it could be too soon for me to do this so when you're at home wait for it to dry if you're going to copy this idea but all I'm going to do is just pinch where they're all held and just pull it round my fingers a little bit just to give it some doming out. Just manipulate it. Pull that slightly forward and that slightly forward and then I'm just going to use pin flare on here just to kind of hold it up. And I'm going to place that at the bottom, about central. That will do, mate. So now, where we brought it down, we're now raising it up. And it wouldn't be a Carnation Crafts card if we didn't have a beautiful little creature in there. So let's have a look at book. Now what we do here is, is book going to take up too much space or is book going to be perfect? If book is going to take up too much space, would I be better with Pip? Let's have a look. Let's get Pip out. Yeah, I think I prefer Pip on that. Alternatively, I could do Dandelion and Burdock and put some florals, but I think they're getting lost in the foliage there. So I think there's too much. I think I need a bigger statement than that. So I'm going to go with Pip. And we're just going to shape her out. Now, I would go to town on Pip with this if I had all the time in the world. I would really shape her in, in, you know, I would really take a good 15 minutes just to shape her out because the impact that you'll get from her on this card would be huge. Uh, obviously we don't have time for that today so I'm just going to work my edges, break those paper fibres down and then bring her wings and I'm following Nick's shading lines all the time. He's done the work for me, I just need to follow them. Take those tail feathers, pull them up and then pull those forward take my pin flare if i can find it lots of that on her tummy so her tummy is the most raised point place her little feet at the bottom so she is grounded so there is a grounding device at the bottom And then I'm just going to very, very quickly bring in, if I can find my snips. Keeping these flat because I want Pip to be my showstopper. Just a tiny amount of glue here. I'm just going to get my corners out. Is that you squeaking, Miss Taz? You've been a little squeaker. Same again at this side. See, to me, that is way too much glue. Little pop of colour there. You look, it's not going to stick now. I've said it's too much glue. Just a tiny little pop of colour on either side. Let me get rid of some of this so it's not quite so busy around it. You can see what that looks like. So you can see now it is a card in its own right. So it is beautiful. It'll stand. It'll do all of the things I want to do. What if I want to make it something else? Just bear with me. So if I take this little sets. I've got my little bag of goodies here. I'm not going to tape these up but we'll go through the process so you can see. And I've got my card bases here at the bottom. Well first of all let's look at it with this backing paper. It's obviously not cut to size, we're just looking here. So there's my card base. If that was cut to size obviously it would make a difference. We can place. You see how that paper brings that colour out? really sweet isn't it it's the difference but then let's build it up with some colors let's just have a look at the colors here and see the differences so if i raise this 
with this beautiful kind of peachy tone here. These are obviously that square, oversized square frame that I'm using. I'm going to cool that. Let's cool that down because the central point is white and I want it to be white. Now there's every chance that's going to be too busy for me because there's already a lot of filigree work there. So it would be up to me to make that choice as I'm going through. But let's place it and see. Now I actually like that a lot and I don't mind that it's busy because I've got that white central focus here and you could put a little sentiment there with a stamp. I actually, I'm not averse to that. I think that's very, very pretty. So, okay, I know I like that color. Let's try it with a different color and see, because this is obviously a cooler tone. That's a very warm tone. Let's try it with a cooler tone. That beautiful kind of light pistachio color that we've got. Oh, I like that a lot. That brings out the greens, really brings out the greens of the foliage. I love that. I like that a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay, so let's try it then. Obviously I haven't got foam tape on this, but let's try it with white on white. Now, to me, something happens there. First of all, I lose something with the lack of color. And I don't quite know what, but I know I've lost something. The color brought something to it. It brought, the, it, brought it out more. However, the colors of the vignettes really pop. So if I was to choose to go white on white with this, I would need to know that I've filled in the whole of that wreath. I'd need them to go to the bottom because I'm losing something in these bottom edges here. D does that make sense? There's, there's a loss because I haven't got to enough here to, um, to allow for that white. So I would need to build up those corners. So let's take that back to color and I'm gonna go in with the, which way are, is it? Let's just take this back. Oh, it's under here, isn't it? Let's go back to this. We've got that gorgeous color. I love that. So in, I'm all for white on white, you know this, but actually in that circumstance, that's the color I would go with because all of my greens are brought out in that sort of flourish with that color and everything merges beautifully and I would be inclined to have a sentiment in the middle. And I think that's what composition is, isn't it? It's about playing, it's about changing, it's about establishing. What I wouldn't do on this card, uh, most definitely is try and fill in my corners. I wouldn't try and put anything there. You've got enough going on. There's, there's more than enough for the eye here. We're still drawing that central focus in, which is what we're always trying to achieve. You're always trying to draw to those center stage pieces. If I put something on the corner, I have just literally over, gone over the edge of what I would find acceptable. So that would just be my preference. Um, so there you go. This is Wild Wonders for you. I think that's the point, isn't it? So we've essentially just made two cards. So there's the one where it's just the base shape on its own. And then you've got the one where you've got that beautiful oversized square frame underneath. And this is what Wild Wonders is. It's all about playing. When we start to get those florals and there's loads that we can pick and choose from and the characters and all the other beautiful stuff that you've seen all through the week, we can, there's so much scope, isn't there? There are no two cards that are going to be the same in, in you know, that any of us do um, because they're, they're all going to be unique and different. And that's why I love the reeds and that's why I love the florals because if you and I make exactly the same card, we're going to come out with a completely different card each because the florals are going to make that happen. So I really, really love them for that. But I also love them because it's that just that peaceful weaving. I love that stuff. You know, it's just something where you just let your mind takes you away. So really, really pretty and a really great way to craft, I think. Just to reiterate and just to remind you guys that the Wild Wonders set is still available. It is at the moment exclusive to Carnation Crafts. You can't get it anywhere else. The code for that is 220513. You'll find that on the website. If you can't remember the code, don't worry about it. Just pop in the name Wild Wonders. It will show. If you want your 10% discount and you have not signed up for the newsletter yet, so you haven't already got a discount code, you can't use both at the same time, that's WWYD10. 
10 and that's going to give you 10% off so that's I don't know how long that will run for but certainly it will run I would think for today uh, so uh, get yourself on there while it's at that price your perfect papers are also on there if you want to mix and match so you can get those gorgeous colors that match and blend and those perfect papers are uh, on the website there you go 220524 it has been a real pleasure bringing wild wonders to you because it is such a gorgeous we knew you were going to love it and you know it, of course you were we will be back um on crate and craft next week with uh, a different collection that you're going to absolutely love it is so lovely to have your company. I will just give you a shout out as well, just for the code for the oversized square frame, which is where you see us using this with the filigree uh, that we've just used, just because I uh, should have read you the number out. And that number is 220523. So just a last note to say thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate the time you spend with us and I love crafting along with you guys. It's always really nice to have your company. So a huge thank you from me. Have a really wonderful weekend. I will see you on Sunday on Facebook Live at three o'clock with a preview of the next collection, which is Bohemian Beauty. And it is an absolute corker. I'll see you all then. Take care. Bye.